Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a cubic equation. I'll be presenting two methods. We have x cubed plus x equals 5 over 8. Let's start with the second method. So to find out what is going on with the second method, I want to show you something first. So first of all, uh, let's go ahead and call this function f of t equals t cubed plus t. So the function on the left hand side, I just called it f of t. And then let's go ahead and differentiate it. We get 3t squared plus 1. Notice that for all real values of t, this is greater than 0, which means f is always increasing. Now what is that supposed to mean, right? in terms of uh, this function, the graph of this function intersecting a horizontal line. It means that there's going to be a single intersection points. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Wow, that's interesting, right? As I said earlier, there's only one intersection point. Why? Because f is always increasing, there's going to be a single intersection point. But what is that x value? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and rewrite our equation. x cubed plus x equals 5 over 8. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 8. That's going to be 8x cubed plus 8x equals 5. And I put everything on the same side. We're going to get the following cubic equation. It's not quadratic, it's cubic. But here's the thing. We can go ahead and write this as 2x cubed and this one as 4 times 2x minus 5 equals 0, and we can use substitution. Let's go ahead and call 2xy. And you probably know why, right? y cubed plus 4y equals 5, or we can just write it as minus 5 equals 0. Notice that the sum of the coefficients in this equation is 0. 1 plus 4 minus 5 is equal to 0. That means y equals 1 is a solution. Remember, we talked about this before in many different videos, right? So if y is equal to 1, then we can just set 2x equals 1, and from here we get x equals 1 half, right? But what about the other solutions? Let's go ahead and find out. So this is a cubic, and I know that y equals 1 is one of the solutions. Therefore, I can do the following. I can just go ahead and factor it in such a way that y equals 1 is a solution. So that means that I, I'd like to get y minus 1 as a factor. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So let's go ahead and do the following. y cubed, I'm thinking about this, like can I write this y cubed minus 1? This has y minus 1 as a factor, right? Cool. Uh, let's go ahead and write the rest so that it balances out. So since I already have negative 1, I just need a negative 4, and everything is all good, right? They're equivalent. But this is good because now we can factor by grouping, right? y cubed minus 1 is a difference of 2 cubes. So I can factor as follows. And here you can clearly see that y equals 1 is a solution. That's how we were able to factor it, actually. So let's go ahead and take out y minus 1 and try to find the other solutions. So if you take out y minus 1, you get y squared plus y plus 1 plus 4, which is y squared plus y plus 5 equals 0. We already know y equals 1 is a solution, and that gave us x equals 1 half. But what about the other one, right? Well, the other one, unfortunately, is not going to give us real solutions. So, but still write them down. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, which is 20, 1 minus 20 is negative 19, so we can kind of write it as square root of 19i with the imaginary number, and all of that is divided by 2. And as you know, that two, uh, y is equal to 2x, so half of this is just going to be the x value. So x from here is going to be negative 1 plus minus the square root of 19i divided by 4. And x equals 1 half is going to be the other solution. Since this is cubic, obviously, you expect to get three solutions, right? And those are the three solutions that you get. By using, the, by using the second method. So that was the second method. Let's go ahead and talk about the first method. So for my first method, 
My first method, by the way, is called no pain, no gain. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Let's rewrite the equation. This is our cubic in a nice form, by the way. Now, remember the cubic formula. Where does that formula come from? So we start by writing a well-known identity. Maybe that's not well-known, but you should know this. A plus B cubed minus 3AB multiplied by A plus B gives us A cubed plus B cubed. If you think about the binomial theorem, expand it and then subtract the two terms in the middle, you end up with the first and the last terms, which are the perfect cubes or cubes. Okay, so here's how the cubic formula works. We're going to call this x and the rest follows. So x cubed minus blah, blah, blah. Now notice that by comparing these two equations, you get a system, which is the following. So this needs to be the coefficient of x, therefore negative 3ab equals 1, because the coefficient of x here is 1, right? And the constant term is a cubed plus b cubed, which is equal to 5 eighths. So a cubed plus b cubed is equal to 5 eighths. Awesome. Let's go ahead and solve for a, b, negative 1 third. And let's go ahead and cube both sides. a cubed, b cubed equals negative 1 over 27. So we got a system. Nice. And this system is not cubic, it's quadratic. But let's go ahead and make substitution again. Set a cubed equal to c. And from the second equation, or the first actually, isolate b cubed. b cubed is equal to 5 over 8 minus a cubed. And then plug it in to the first equation. The reason why we're only subbing for a cubed is because we're going to get an uh, equation in a single variable. So now this gives us the following. a cubed times b cubed, which is 5 over 8 minus a cubed, equals negative 1 over 27. I know this equation doesn't look very pleasant, but it'll resolve. And set uh, a cubed equals to c, so you're going to get 5 over 8c minus c squared equals negative 1 over 27. Let's put everything on the same side. c squared minus 5 over 8c minus 1 over 27 equals 0. Multiply both sides by 7, 27 times 8, which is 216, and you get the following. You get a quadratic, 216c squared minus 135c minus 8 equals 0. This is a quadratic, so it will be easy to solve, right? Of course, but here's the solutions. 45 plus minus 7 times the square root of 57 divided by 145. And you're like, what? Are you serious? And a cubed is c, so this is a cubed. Take one of the solutions. doesn't matter which one because a plus b, you know, is commutative. So from here, a becomes the cube root. So a becomes... One of them, one of the cube roots, and b becomes the other cube root. So to keep a long story short, x becomes the cube root of 45 plus 7 times the square root of 57 over 144 plus the cube root of 45 minus 7 times square root of 57 over 144. It's fun, isn't it? Okay. And guess what? If you simplify this expression, you get x equals 1 half. And this brings us to the end of this video. And here is the graph with the solution. x equals 1 half is the only solution as the only intersection point. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.